Today's feast reminds us that God intends for the family to be a holy place. It's sort of the culmination of all these different pointers that direct us to this truth. First of all, think about the fact that Jesus came. He didn't come with some rich, powerful world leader. He didn't come with angels and saints and all this incredible display of God's power. No. He came in a family. Just a regular, simple family. And think about how Jesus reveals God to us. He reveals God as Father. And by doing so, shows the holiness to which all fathers are called. And Jesus had a mother, a real mother who actually bore him in her womb. And he gave her to all of us. And she certainly is the model for all Christian mothers. And by all of this, God shows us that it's in the family where God wants to be present. So raise your hand if you've heard the term domestic church. All right, I think that's the best so far. But after this Mass, you can all raise your hand because now you've heard it. Domestic church, this is something that the church has used for a long time to refer to the family. So think about all of the stuff that goes on here at our parish. And there's a lot. I'm a priest here, and I don't even know all the stuff that happens here. We have recovery groups that meet here. We have all the Christian service, outreach stuff that goes on. We have support groups for mom, moms. We have Bible studies. We have RCIA. We had a kids' retreat the other day. All this stuff goes on at our parish. And in many ways, the family is meant to be a small unit of that same work. A place where God is worshipped, where people pray, where they learn to serve one another, where they support those who are weak, who are struggling. But think about all that stuff that happens here at the parish. The most important of all of that is prayer. The most important thing we do as a parish is pray. The most important thing any Christian community can do is to come together to commune with God in prayer, to worship Him, and give Him the praise that is His due. And so it is in the domestic church, the family. The most important thing that can happen together as a family is prayer. Now one of the problems in the church at large today, at least for the last several decades, has been a real failure in teaching. There have been a lot of silent pulpits, so to speak. And there could be all sorts of reasons for this. Some of it is just poor training for pastors and preachers. Some of it is just how much has changed in our culture, and some pastors are afraid to rock the boat, to, to offend people, and so they just stay silent. And this lack of teaching, lack of guidance and direction has allowed for a lot of error, a lot of damage to come into our church. And the same, sadly, could be said about the family. Because there is a pulpit in the family, and it's called the dining room table. And just think about all of the opportunities that you, especially as parents, have to guide your children, to teach them, to raise them with important moral values an important way of understanding this world in which we live. Now sadly, in many ways, family today is under attack, is being undermined by our culture. And in preparing for this homily, I had a hard time knowing where to even begin with this. There are so many ways in which this is being done. So these are just some ways in which family is being undermined. One way is this liberal socialist ideology that would claim that the primary building block of society is the state, is a civil structure. And some would even go so far as to say that this 
civil structure can replace the family. But this, of course, completely goes against one of the most fundamental aspects of Catholic social teaching. And that's that the most fundamental building block of any society, of any culture, is not the state, it's the family. And so nothing could ever replace the family in our culture. Let's talk about marriage. For literally thousands of years, it's been almost universally understood that marriage is between a man and a woman. And that this is what's necessary for a culture to thrive, for children to be raised and born into this world. But in the last decade or so, we've almost completely abandoned this understanding. And now we're even moving in the direction of opening up marriage to multiple people, to more than just two. We've almost completely lost an understanding of what marriage itself is meant to be. And think about our understanding of sexuality. God gives us this beautiful teaching on what is the purpose of our sexuality. He teaches us that it's meant to be a total gift of self, a complete offering, something that's always open to life, something that's exclusive, that's faithful, that's meant to be only within the covenant of marriage because it is an acting out, a living out of the commitment that spouses make at their wedding day. This is how God intends us to live out our sexuality. But thanks to the sexual revolution over the last several decades, this too has almost completely been rejected. And our understanding of our sexuality has become so trivialized, it's almost meaningless. It's just purely a bodily function with no point other than gratification. And all of this has only been made worse with the widespread use of pornography, contraception, cohabitation, all of these things that violate this beautiful teaching that God gives us. Now these are all big topics. Each one of these could be a homily in itself. We don't have time to talk about all of it at length today. But all of this is a way of saying that in so many ways, family life in our world today is hemorrhaging, is being undermined. So we have our work cut out for us, don't we? And that's why this feast is so fitting, especially in our world today. We all need a reminder that God has a plan and a purpose for family life, that he holds families in such high esteem, that he's calling them to be places of holiness. And it's important for all of us to defend family life, especially out in the public realm, to uphold these values and principles that are so foundational to our faith, so foundational to families. It's important that all of us take the time to learn about these things. We are immersed in what our culture tells us about family. And it's so easy to buy into so many of these misconceptions and these false ideas out there and to begin to think, maybe the church has it all wrong. Maybe I've got this all wrong. And most importantly of all, it's essential that we're all praying for our families. As a parish, this week, we're going to be entering into a beautiful devotion that comes from the Knights of Columbus. I don't know if they, like, invented this, but they're certainly big advocates of it. And it's consecrating your family to the Holy Family. And this isn't uh, a magic fix that's going to make all, all of our problems go away, but it's certainly a simple, beautiful way of striving to make our families these holy places that God would have them be. And to prepare for this consecration that we'll all do next week, next Sunday, there are some simple steps we can take in the next few days. One is to gather your family together every day and to pray. You can do that however you like. Some families like to pray the rosary. Some like to read the Bible together. 
Some families bring their whole family into the Adoration Chapel, which is a beautiful thing. It's a little distracting if you're in there, but it's great to see all these kids marching in and trying to be quiet, which they're usually not very good at. But whatever you do, just pick something and pray every day. Also, choose some act of self-denial that the whole family can enter into, some way of fasting. You don't have to completely skip eating for a week. I don't want anyone passing out next Sunday. But just pick something that you can all give up together every day for the week. And lastly, bring the whole family to confession. It's so important whenever we do some sort of spiritual act or or exercise to prepare our hearts first to clear out all of the, the junk that can be collected from the sins that we commit. So after we enter into this week of preparation next Sunday, we'll all pray together this prayer of consecration to the Holy Family. There are a lot of things working against family life today. And sadly, many of our own families have been scarred with a lot of dysfunction, with brokenness, with pain. And because of that, today's feast can be very painful for many of us be a time where you're you're just reminded of the brokenness that's present back home. And especially in those cases, it's tempting to lose hope, to think that my family is so far gone, it's so broken, it's beyond repair. And I would say to you that this feast is especially for these families. I myself come from a broken family. And it's brought so much pain and difficulty over the years. But I've also seen the amazing things that God can do even in the midst of brokenness. Amen? So God has the power to transform all of our homes even if there's great difficulty and discord. And this week of preparation, this prayer that we're going to do next week, is a time for all of us, regardless of what has been going on back home, to ask for God's blessing, that he would be with our families, that our families would truly be the holy places they're meant to be, where God is known, loved, and served. Amen.